Galen, one of the questions in uh, consciousness studies now, and it's getting hotter, is at, at what level in the phylogenetic scale can we impute uh, consciousness as, as we, not human level consciousness, but the same kind of thing? Um, and maybe originally people thought maybe just uh, primates and then mammals, and now many think invertebrates, and some people go all the way down to cells. As a panpsychist who believes that, that consciousness is the fundamental uh, at all levels of, all, of everything, um, how, how do you apply that to where consciousness exists uh, phylogenetically? Yeah, so the question is, when we take something that we think of as a biological individual, yeah. at what level do I think that that individual is a, itself a conscious subject, given that I think that it's made of <laughs> consciousness in some sense? Well, I mean, it's an empirical question um, which we can't answer. I mean, I agree with the old view. We don't know how far down it goes, and there is, there is no way we could ever establish it with certainty. Um, this is... This, ultimately links back to the other mind's problem. I can't even know that you're conscious, <laughs> right? So yeah. the, uh, the point, okay, here's a point worth making, I think, which is that um, there is no necessary connection between in, um, intelligent behavior and consciousness. I regard them as completely separate. So that I think there could in principle be what we now call a, a zombie. I don't mean a physical duplicate. I mean something that is in this behaviorally indistinguishable from a human being, but is not conscious. And on, <clears throat> on the other hand, I think it's quite clear to me there could be consciousness without any remote trace of anything like intelligent behavior, because it could just be very primitive. It could be like the very first thing that happens when a, a, a fetus starts to be a, a subject of consciousness. So there, as, you, as psychologists say, there's a double dissociation. <laughs> consciousness and intelligence are completely separate. You can never use intelligence as a criterion of the presence of consciousness. Yeah. And some people who are trying to analyze where a consciousness is on the phylogenetic scale will will try to get different kinds of tests. I think everybody right. recognizes they that. They will. They and will. And I think it's just a busted flush. It's a mistaken project. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's really, in the end, it's a kind of crypto reductionism because it says all it says is oh well when this intelligent when this behavior gets to be this kind of interesting intelligent that's when we're going to call it a conscious yeah. subject so that is just that is to operationalize the notion of consciousness to say i'm just going to apply it here because there's clever behavior yeah. but that's not it consciousness is what it is and it's <laughs> utterly nothing to do with behavior well I, I, it, Go to the other mind's problem, because I, uh, I can't know that you're conscious, you can't know that I'm conscious, of course, but we infer it because we have similar kinds sure. of reactions. Sure. Sure. And sure. so at some point, we have all the same kinds of reactions, so I would, I'm given to that assumption. Indeed. So th therefore, people use some of those same characteristics Indeed. Uh, to see where it, where it is. This is exactly how the line goes, and it seems perfectly reasonable. But it's, it's, it's turning it into epistemological question about what um, I would just say, in the end, that's not the way to go. Um, there could be a creature that never behaved in any way that was conscious. Um, just because uh, we use this as a criterion, but because it's the best we can do, but it, it, it's it's not a, it's not as it were probative. It's not going to. It doesn't settle the question. Uh, and, and and on the other side, you can see some kind of behavioral reaction to the environment that in, in, a, in a in a protozoa that looks like a kind of intelligence. Of course. And yes. you can't infer from that that it, it has any, even any form of consciousness. That's right. But the fact that you're a panpsychist and believe that consciousness is, pervades everything, wouldn't intelligence at least, give, and, and believe that there's consciousness in everything, wouldn't that give you more reason to believe that something very primitive would be, have some kind of uh, feeling? Yeah, well, precisely so, and that's why I don't think you can use intelligence as a criterion for consciousness. <laughs>